content warning for violence. Hi everyone, welcome back to Just Stripper Things. Just doing a quick one today, so welcome back to my bedroom. This was kind of an impromptu video, so I didn't want to bother my amazing producer last minute like, Hey, let's film a video today! So, um, also, I got a new job and it's on call, so my schedule is kind of constantly up in the air, but the job is amazing and totally worth it, so I just gotta make it work. If you have been following us on Facebook, you have probably seen me posting about this. It's been on my mind a lot, so I felt it was important to talk about it. Today, we are talking about the murder of Marilyn Levesque and the broader implications of how it was allowed to happen. Marilyn Levesque was only 22 years old when she was murdered in a hotel room by a man out on day parole. He was originally given a life sentence for killing his partner, Chantal Duchesne, in 2004. He beat her with a hammer and stabbed her. He had a history of abuse. According to a court document from his murder trial, he had assaulted his ex-wife before he met Deshen. The parole board's latest written decision stated that, During the hearing, your parole officer underlined a strategy that was developed with the goal that would allow you to meet women in order to meet your sexual needs. And as we all know, a man's wish to fulfill his sexual needs completely overrides women's rights to safety and even to life. What a world we live in. <sighs> a spokesperson from the parole board stated that public safety is the primary consideration in all Parole Board of Canada conditional release decisions. Oh, really? Tell me more. <laughs> the murderer had been banned from the massage parlor where Marilyn Levesque worked due to violent behavior. If it wasn't for the criminalization of advertising, material benefit, communicating, and purchasing of sex due to Bill C-36, the management or staff could have reported his violent behavior to the authorities. They could have made it known, and Marilyn Levesque may have known. Unfortunately, under our current laws regarding sex work, if they had, they would have been raided and shut down. Who knows how many people would have not only lost their livelihood, but also faced harsh penalties. This is the reality we live with, that sex workers can't go to the police about violent clients because they run the risk of legal repercussions. How did you get the client? Were you communicating? That's illegal. This is what happens when you criminalize everything around sex work while claiming that you're just trying to protect people. Who are you protecting? Who? Who deserves protection under the law? Now, that's not all, folks. On top of all this bullshit, this happened in the House of Commons. I would ask the honorable member uh, to consider listening to the voices of sex workers. Sex workers are saying that sex work is work. And I also ask the honorable member if he considers the Harper government's decision to implement Bill 36, which criminalized the work environments, the establishments that sex workers go to to feel safe, that criminalized their ability to hire security, if he acknowledges that this is a factor in this death and many others. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, but wait for it. Um, I would just respond to that by asking the honorable member across the way um, if it's a uh, area of work that she is considered and uh, if that is an appropriate 
I, Mr. Speaker, I think this makes the point. This makes the point. I do not think any woman in this country ever chooses this as a job. This is something that they are trafficked into. This is something that we have to work hard to end in Canada. Prostitution in Canada is inherently, inherently dangerous and is something that we must work hard to ensure that all Canadians have a safe place, a safe place to live in this country, and we do not want to see our women and girls forced into prostitution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, no, no. Hilarious, in a joke without a punchline way, because he supports Bill C-36, which is what makes sex work inherently dangerous. You can't claim that you are trying to protect women while literally putting them in danger. This is disingenuous at best, or again, as always, suggesting that sex workers don't deserve the same protection under the law as other workers. Now, I cannot overstate how much I love the NDP members of Parliament in this. East on a point of Thank order. You, Mr. Speaker, I listened to the honourable member's response to my uh, colleague's uh, question, and. Uh, he made a very unparliamentary remark, I believe, uh, that he seems to be suggesting that the Honourable Member asked this question because she had a particular interest in a certain line of work. And I think that that's uh, uh, insulting and unparliamentary, notwithstanding the fact that uh, the, the Honourable Member recognised that the, uh, the sex workers who are in great danger in this country uh, are, in fact, workers. Because this is exactly what we need here. Listen to sex workers, amplify the voices and concerns of sex workers, make sure that sex workers are represented and heard by the people who are making crucial decisions that will affect them and possibly cost them their lives. The other point Verson makes is that this is to protect women and girls from sex trafficking. Oh, honey, sex trafficking and... The trafficking of minors is already illegal. You don't need to criminalize sex work entirely to address that. We don't just criminalize all of labor entirely because child labor happens. We criminalize child labor. Okay, everybody, stop working right now. All labor is stopped because we must prevent child labor. I mean... One can dream, right? And then we come upon the very loaded word, choice. It's my favorite word, especially used in these contexts. It's the best. I love it so much. Nobody makes a choice to be in sex work. Well, choices aren't made in a vacuum. We live in a capitalist society. Surprise! And we prefer to have housing, food, and other necessities, so we work. I didn't dream of being in retail as a little kid, but here we are. The entire concept of choice, as if it's made entirely without the influence of circumstances that we cannot control, is fucking frustrating. Stop it. So... That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it in spite of the lower production value. <laughs> if you enjoy our content and want to support us, please subscribe, share, 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 share. Check out our Patreon so we can get equipment and better editing software and all that shit. Hit that bell if you would like to be notified whenever we sporadically upload content. I apologize that it's so sporadic, but such is life. I hope you all are doing great. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Mwah.